welcome to this family celebration service from St Philip's. We've got a really fun service lined up this morning and we're looking forward to worshipping with you. Now, I wonder what's special about today. Do you know? It's not Christmas, the weather's far too warm for that. All the young people at St Philip's are off school for the next two weeks, but it isn't the summer holidays. The weather is far too cold for that. What could it be, Paul? Do you know? I think I do. Today is Easter Sunday, which means that today we are thinking about Jesus. And not Jesus as a baby, it's not Christmas. True, everybody loves babies, unless your name is Herod. <laughs> but we're not thinking about Jesus as a baby today. We're thinking about Jesus as a man, a grown up. We're thinking about all that he did, especially in the last three years of his life. Do you remember what he got up to? Well, when he was about 30, he got baptised by his cousin John, John the Baptist, funny enough, the guy who wore camel skins and ate crickets. Yuck! Anyway, Jesus got baptised and then immediately went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and had a massive encounter with the devil, who tried to persuade him not to do what God had sent him to do, which was to save all of us from our sins. Yay! But Jesus wasn't having any of it from the devil. He refused to be tempted and started to go all around Galilee. That's where he was living at the time. It's in the Middle East, really close to Jerusalem. It's still there if you want to check it in an atlas later. So Jesus started going around the place and the first thing he did was gather together a really good group of friends. Can you remember what they were called? Well, yes, they were called Simon, who Jesus actually called Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who I'll mention again in a second. That was what they were called, but what I meant was that together they were called Jesus's disciples. That means people who learn. Jesus chose them so that he could teach them all about who he was, what he was here on earth to do, and also to teach them to do the same thing and even greater things than him. And what was he here on earth to do? He was here to show the world how much God loves us, to call us to repentance, which means saying sorry for the things that we've done that are wrong and spoil our relationship with God, to restore us to the beautiful relationship with God that he created us for, and to announce to the world, God's kingdom had come. Wow. And in order to demonstrate what God's kingdom is like, Jesus went around helping people, healing people, loving people, encouraging people, forgiving people, and even raising people from the dead. No wonder everyone loved him. No wonder he was really popular, rich and famous. Well, actually, no, because as well as helping people, healing people, loving people, encouraging people, forgiving people, and even raising people from the dead, Jesus also was really clear about other features of God's kingdom. He was really clear that as well as hope, healing and forgiveness, God's kingdom is also about humility, kindness, justice and holiness. Hmm, now that's a big problem if you aren't humble, kind, just and holy, which is true of many of the people in Jesus' day, and ours too, sadly. Some of the most unhumble, unkind, unjust and unholy people around in Jesus' time were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were basically the vicars and church leaders of the day. Rather than teaching people the true nature of God, our loving, just and holy Father, they gave everyone the impression that God was angry and that he loved them, the vicars and church leaders, the most. Thank you. They thought they were the best thing since sliced bread, even though sliced bread hadn't even been invented then. That's how arrogant they were. And they didn't like it one bit when Jesus stood up to them. In fact, they hated him for it. Every time that Jesus welcomed someone that they thought was worthless, poor, or what they considered to be a sinner, Jesus made them look bad. Every time Jesus healed someone or forgave someone or loved someone, he exposed the religious leaders as selfish, nasty and hypocritical. Hypocritical means that you say one thing, but you actually do another. You don't practice what you preach. You think that you're more important than anyone else, but you pretend to be the most humble. And the more Jesus showed them in their true light, the more they hated him. And because they had hate in their hearts rather than love, that hatred quickly resulted in them wanting to get rid of Jesus. And what was the best way to get rid of Jesus? Kill him! And that's what they did. One of his best friends, Judas Iscariot, betrayed Jesus to the chief priests and they went to the Roman rulers and lied about Jesus. They said he was stirring up trouble and needed to be punished. And get this, even though the Romans didn't actually want to kill him, the people caused such a fuss that they were forced to. And so Jesus died. It was all over. 
but not for long. You see, all of this was God's plan. And Jesus loved his father in heaven so much, he was willing to go through death just for us, just for you, just for me, because he loves us as his father loves us. He did it all for love. Jesus knew what he was doing. In fact, he even told his disciples what was going to happen before it happened. The Son of Man would be killed, but on the third day he would rise again. And that's what happened on Easter Sunday. Jesus came alive! And the devil's plan to stop God from saving us failed. Jesus won! And now we can know and love him forever. Woohoo! And that is what Easter is all about. Thanks, Paul. Yes, it's Easter. Easter is one of the most important days in the year because as Paul has just reminded us, Easter Sunday is when we celebrate that Jesus is alive. It's not really about chocolate or daffodils or Easter bunnies. It's all about what Jesus did for us and what it means for us. And we're gonna think more about that later in the service. But right now, we're going to worship together as a family. So jump up and get ready to praise God with this awesome song, which celebrates what Jesus has done for us. And if you're not a young person, feel free to have a dance around too. And after we've worshipped, the Makivos are going to lead us in prayer.
living with Thank you for doing this. Lord, help us to draw closer to you as a church community during this Easter season. We help we help help us to know that you care for us and that you are always with us. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated. May you pour out your love in their hearts to give them hope. We pray for the children and the youth, especially over the holidays and into the summertime. Give them peace, compassion and confidence in you. Our Almighty Father, we thank you for the Mat 22. Bless the work at St Martin's, the one-to-one -one team and the roads on the road. Bless those who are serving in your name. May you refresh their spirits. Lord, we pray for inspiration and breakthrough as we come out of restrictions. May we see your kingdom come into this neighbourhood. Bless all done the people who live here and the community at large. Bring comfort, joy and rest where it is needed. We pray that your name will be exalted and many will come to know you as Lord. Father God, thank you for the gift of the vaccines. We pray for those who have been working hard to deliver them to those who care for the unwell. We pray too for those who mourn and those struggling with long COVID. May they know your presence with them. May you refresh their spirit and bring them peace, comfort and strength. We pray for more miracles to happen and healings to come in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Joe, Caitlin and Caleb. This morning we're going to share a family communion together. So if you haven't got your bread and wine ready, you might want to grab them during the worship. But right now, we're going to wrap up our time of prayer by preparing our hearts to share communion together. And one of the ways we do that is by saying sorry for our sins, for all the bad and sad things that we have said and done, and even the things that we didn't do that we know we should have. Easter is amazing because when Jesus came alive again, he didn't just beat death, he beat sin too. All the things that get in the way of us having a perfectly loving and truly wonderful relationship with God, Jesus dealt with it all. And now we can know God, love God, and know that he loves us. There's nothing better. And when we take communion, we're not only remembering that Jesus died for us, we're celebrating that Jesus has saved us and brought us back to our loving Father in heaven. So let's take a few moments to say sorry to Jesus and thank you. The grown-ups use some words to help us do that. You don't have to use them. You can say sorry and thank you in whatever way you want. But sometimes it's just helpful to say the words together because when we take communion, we're doing it together as a family who love the Lord and love each other. So the words are going to come up on the screen now and let's say them out loud together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. When we say sorry to God, the Bible tells us that Jesus is full of compassion, that he's quick to forgive us, and that he remembers our sins no more. That means that he doesn't hold them against us. He forgives us so that there's nothing between us and God that could ever get in the way of us knowing the fullness of his love. So I'm going to say a little prayer to thank Jesus for that. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly say sorry, thank you for your mercy upon us. Thank you that you pardon and deliver us from all our sins. And now Jesus, I pray that you would confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal, secure in our relationship with you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's worship together again now. Jesus' blood 
their righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus name Christ alone in Christ alone cornerstone weak may strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging
covered by the blood. We're covered by the blood. Covered by the blood of Jesus. Death could not, death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. For you have no right. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You were the word. Silence the boast of sin and 
is Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jules, let's talk some more about Easter. Easter Sunday is the day that we celebrate the best news the whole of humanity has ever had in the history of everything ever. Sounds pretty important. It is. Listen to this. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed appeared. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to Jesus' best friends, the disciples, and to all the others who were with them. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the disciples. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. That was from Luke's Gospel, and it's the amazing account of the very first Easter Sunday around 2,000 years ago. It's the moment that Jesus' best friends began to realise that everything he had said was coming true, but it was a lot to take in. It was. No wonder Peter and the women who first went to the tomb were a bit confused, because when they got there, they didn't see what they expected to see. They expected to find Jesus' body in the tomb. That's because they knew that only three days before, they had seen Jesus crucified by Roman soldiers. It had been a very sad and frightening day for them all. At that moment, it was hard for them to believe Jesus was who he said he was. All their hope was in him, but he died on the cross. They'd seen it happen, and they were there when Jesus was buried. They'd seen the heavy stone rolled over the entrance. Right in that moment, things looked pretty final and pretty bleak. But kids, do you remember that when we talked about the cross in our session last week, we said that Jesus' death on the cross wasn't the end of the story. On that very first Easter day, God's power was breaking through the darkness. It was breaking through sin and it was breaking through death. As Mary and the other women stared, confused and worried at the empty tomb, the presence of God filled the place where they were and two angels shining with light came to explain what had happened. Why are you looking for someone who's alive in a tomb? They asked them. Tombs are for dead people, but Jesus is not here. He has risen. Risen means he had come alive again. It was the most amazing day. And you know what? Jesus coming alive again is the most important thing for you and for all of us to believe and understand because it means that Jesus' love for us is stronger than death and stronger than sin. Imagine this thorny branch is all the wrong stuff in our lives that messes us up and hurts other people. It isn't just the things we do. It's the things that we think and the things that we don't do that we should do. Think about some of those things right now. Sometimes I say things that I don't mean to. I may be tired, grumpy or upset, 
Or maybe someone has said or done something hurtful to me and in that moment I just want to be able to fight back. But the things I say can hurt people. I don't mean to. I'm always sorry when I do, but they still hurt. And I need to say sorry not just to the person concerned, but to God, because he's the one who cares about the state of our heart. The Bible tells us that what we hold in our hearts, what we allow to grow there, impacts what we say and do. If we let weeds and thorns grow up in our hearts, then weeds and thorns will come out of our mouths. What might be a weed or a thorn to you? Maybe anger, resentment, selfishness, pride, the things that make us love people less and ourselves more? It's not a good thing to allow those things to grow in our hearts because they always end up hurting us and hurting other people. But most of all, they get in the way of our relationship with God. Look at all these thorns, they're getting in the way between me and God. And God doesn't want that to happen because he created us to be close to him and full of his love and his nature. So God made a way for the thorns and weeds to be rooted out of our lives and the cross was the way that he did it. He sent his perfect, loving, holy son to take away the thorns and weeds. On the cross, Jesus actually took our bad stuff on himself. So he allowed himself to be choked up with weeds so that we could be free to love God and be loved by God. Look, there's nothing between me and God now. When Jesus rose from the dead, he demonstrated to the whole world that he was more powerful and more awesome than any of those thorns or weeds. He had won and not even death could overpower him. Which means that when we turn to Jesus, say sorry for what we've done and put our trust in him, nothing can overcome us either because Jesus has the victory over everything. Saying sorry for the weeds and thorns in our hearts is what takes their power away and allows God to look after our hearts, like a gardener who tends a beautiful garden with care and love. So instead of weeds and thorns, instead of anger, resentment, selfishness or pride, Jesus' death and resurrection has cleared the ground so that we can allow God to cause his fruit to grow in our hearts. Can you remember what the fruit of God is? In Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23, the Bible tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. Saying sorry to Jesus and being forgiven by him is what allows that kind of fruit to grow in our hearts. It allows God's nature to grow in us. And Jesus' resurrection is what has opened the door for God to have access to our hearts and for us to become more like him. So the cross wasn't the end of the story because Easter Sunday shows us that Jesus has the victory. He is alive. Kids, you know the resource we've been looking at this term. We've been thinking about the nature of God, haven't we? What he's like. Can you remember some of the sessions? We've thought about how God is love, that God is our father. That's right. Can you think of any of the others? You can shout out at home what else we've learned about who God is this term. We're going to go for a speedy run through of some of the sessions. We'll hold up some clues to help the grown ups who won't be quite as quick at this as you are. Are you ready? God is our healer. God is our rock. God is our shield. God is sovereign. God is present. And God is our saviour. And you know, I think we should add one more this Easter Sunday, that God is alive. Jesus is alive. What a great way to end our series. We're going to share communion together now. As I said earlier, when we take communion, we are remembering that Jesus died for us on the cross, but because he came alive again, communion also helps us to celebrate that Jesus has saved us and brought us back to our loving Father in heaven. We remember the cross with thanksgiving and we celebrate the resurrection with joy. So get your bread and wine ready and let's remember each other in this moment too. Some of us are sitting together as family, but others of us are sitting on our own. It's really important that we remember that we are all family together at St. Philip's. So as we prepare to take communion, let's just ask the Holy Spirit to put on our hearts people in our congregation who we know and love, and let's give thanks for each other, even as we remember what Jesus has done for us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his commands, 
Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once and for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray with confidence and thanksgiving the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So if you have your bread and wine ready, let's share communion together now. So guys, come in and join us. Kids and youth, if you want to give the grown-ups in your household communion, when you give them the bread, you can say something like, the body of Jesus given for you. And when you give them the wine, you can say, the blood of Jesus shed for you. So, St. Philip's family, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Take all the time you need to share communion together as we worship again now.
his body lay light of the world did darkness lay then burst in full to glorious day Thank you so much for joining us today there's no prayer ministry zoom room today but we'll see you again online next sunday and then the following week keep an eye out for the news email which will have the link to save your seat for our first live service in the building on the 18th of april when we're also planning to have kids and youth sessions we're looking forward to seeing you there happy easter guys have a great easter holiday and as you celebrate the truth that jesus is alive May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 This is Holy Communion Here at the table of the Lord Where we remember his body broken and his blood that was poured out they hung him there at calvary the lamb of god for all to see his love for us kept him on
our great high priest, a new heaven and 